Hey guys, before we get into this, just know that the five winners of last week's giveaway will be announced at the end of this video. So please be sure to watch this until the very end. You know the pain of creating a table of contents on PowerPoint, which may or may not make you want to pull your hair out? You won't have that problem with SlideProof, the all-in-one PowerPoint add-in. With SlideProof, you can easily automate your table of contents, change its design based on your needs, and even have the ability to add extra things like time slots or accountability. And this is only one of four features SlideProof has to offer. Check out slideproof.com to know more. Welcome back to another video from SlideCal. My name is Yoyo, and together we're going to make your slides amazing. This week, we're going to focus on timelines. I'm almost certain that you have been asked or will be asked to do one, and today we are going to make an awesome looking one. Just keep in mind, the goal here is to take our information and visualize it in the best way possible to make sure that your audience's interpretation of your slide is easy and unhindered. The information usually contains stuff like dates, milestones, and deadlines, and you're responsible to convey it in the best possible way so that your audience can easily identify what they need to know based on their needs. So let's get started. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to make a blank slide because blank slides excite us. We're so happy when we see blank slides, right? I don't know why you guys hate blank slides. I love blank slides. Anyway, I'm gonna go to shapes and I'm gonna click on the chevron arrow, which is this arrow right here. I'm going to make it wide, but kind of short. Something that looks like this. Look, look, look for something like this, right? I'm going to also make five copies of this, like so. And I'm going to make sure that the first shape is touching against my guide over here. And my last shape is also going to be touching against my guide over there. And I just screwed up my guide, but there it is. Anyway, so I'm just going to move that over here. And I'm going to highlight everything and I'm going to go to home. I'm going to go to arrange. I'm going to go to align. And then I'm going to click on distribute horizontally. All right, cool. Now, the reason why is because I want to take advantage of the entire slide. I mean, that's pretty prevalent, right? You want to take advantage of the white space. So many times have I seen a lot of analysts or a lot of students or whatever, you know, make timelines or whatever, where, where they move the shape over here or something. And, and well, not literally overlaying, but you know what I mean? And they just leave this part here. Take advantage of your white space. Take advantage of your white space. It's a very powerful tool to have. Once you're done with that, I'm going to show you this really, really awesome trick that I taught myself. Uh, when it came to PowerPoint design and it really helped me. So uh, I'm gonna click on insert and I'm gonna click on shapes and I'm going to click on rectangle. I'm gonna click on this rectangle and make it so wide that it covers almost the entire width of the of the slide, right? The height has to be like kind of low, something that looks like this, right? And I'm gonna color it gray. I'm gonna explain why I did that in just a bit. Be sure you do this rectangle at the top of your five shapes here, as well as just at the bottom over here, right? Now, these two things here are basically our no entry zones. They will serve as our gaps, right? So when you look at this, for example, you see a gap at the top and you see a gap at the bottom. You don't see anything you know, coming in there and distorting the whole image. It is very powerful. You can use guides for this, but I use the shapes for this because I can delete it after and I find a hard time deleting guides as well. Um, the best way I can describe it is, you know when you're painting a car or sorry, or you're painting a house or whatever and you use newspapers to, to cover up on the stuff that you don't want paint on? This is exactly that. We're not allowing any icons, any text, any colors to come in on the gray area, right? That, 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 it's a rule that we set for ourselves, and I think it's a very powerful one to have, right? So. When you're done with that, I'm going to start putting in the years. So I'm putting in 2013. Remember that you can put in any information that you would like. You know, this can be phases, this can be um, deadlines, whatever you want. I'm just putting in the years for tutorial purposes. And now I'm gonna color code them. Uh, I went with two colors, as you can see here. I went with green and pink. And the reason why is because it's I find it easier for my audience to 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 sort of find a sequential sort of process in, in my slide so they can jump from green to pink, then green to pink, then green and so on and so forth. Um, you can go, I would recommend, sorry, that you would go up to four, four, no more than four, because if you go higher than that, you're sort of distorting the image with all these colors and you're making a rainbow. Uh, just, just stick to up to four, but I'm gonna go with two for this one. So uh, in order to cut down time on this video, I'm going to use a format painter option with these settings that I have over here. So I'm making the first one, the third one and the fifth one green. 
and I'm making the second and fourth shapes pink, like so. Cool, 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 cool. The second thing we're going to do now is we're going to add these icons on the left. Again, I put them on over here just to cut down on time. When you're using icons, remember, you're using icons to represent the data that you have there. These icons here don't mean anything. But for example, let's say that you had an awesome profitable year in 2015. You would use an icon, something like this, to show you that, you know, 15, 2015 is awesome. And um, maybe that you want, you have star employees in 2017. You would use something like this, right? Uh, it, it, it completely, it, it comes down to whatever you want. Um, again, I understand that a lot of you have troubles with icons. I'm linking the icon video again in this video. It is a great video. It will help you uh, get all your icons set in stone and uh, it'll, it'll help you out in the long run. I, I promise you that. Um, so I'm going to basically move these just above. And remember, I'm not, I'm, I'm just, I'm just putting above our gray little rectangle that we have here. So I'm putting the money over there. I'm putting that in the middle over here and I'm putting the profitability or whatever it is over here just making sure that everything's aligned and then I'm going to put the little dartboard thing over here and a little star thing over here as well just make sure that it's there we go that's fine okay cool 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 so what we're going to do is we're going to go to insert we're going to click on text box and we're going to make a text box with the exact same width as the chevron shape at the top there the reason why is because we don't want the text to overflow and distort the entire image for, for example if you have the text going all the way there you don't want the the text to just show off in the 2014 section you want all the text to be under the 2013 section in order for the audience to associate that text to that chevron to that icon making it all fit together nicely like a jigsaw puzzle. It's great, it's fantastic. So I'm just gonna put in the words title here and I'm also going to add some random text such as the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog over at the bottom over there. And uh, let's just do that now. I'm clicking on the keep text only function just to show you that, you know, how, how to edit the text and how to move stuff around and stuff like that. So don't, don't worry too much about it. So I'm gonna set everything to 13. I'm going to set the top part here to Pantone Black Caps, just to highlight that it's a title. And I'm going to set the bottom part here to Sigu UI, Sigu UI, to Windows Phone or something. I don't know. I don't like it that much, but you know, it'll do the job. So um, now what we're going to do is we're going to ensure that there's justification of the text over there. And what that will do is we'll take advantage of the text box's white space uh, a lot more, like so it looks better. So I'm going to click on Justify, Justify over here, and look at that. Um, so now it's time to color. Coloring is always fun. I'm going to change the body text to gray. I think that black distorts the image just a bit. I think gray is a, lo a lot more calmer when people read it, uh, read the slide that is. And I'm going to also change the title of this to the chevron color over here. So that's going to be our green color that we put together earlier before. Um, you might be asking that this or saying or thinking or whatever, that this text box won't be fitting up there. I'm aware of that, don't worry. So a quick trick that I can show you right now is I'm going to move this text box over here at the bottom, just making sure that it barely touches on the guys that I've implemented. I'm going to move everything, right? All, all the images that we have down here, all the way down here, just to, and, and make sure that the text box is just barely touching against the gray things that we set up earlier, right? So now I'm going to replicate three of these text boxes for 2015 and 2017, like so. So one over here and one over here. And now I'm gonna duplicate this and move one over just above the 2016 option, just like so, like this, and move one here. And now just comes the fine tuning process, which is basically I'm gonna make this our little pink color here, like so. I'm gonna make this our little pink color here, like so. I'm going to change the color of this and this and this to green, like so. And I'm gonna change the colors of this and this to pink, like so. Um, sorry, format, pink, there we go. And we're gonna highlight everything now, just to make sure that everything is selected and we're just gonna move it up just to take advantage of the white space just a bit better. And there we go. Delete these little newspapers that we put in, the placeholders, delete them all, and there we go. Very easy to do, very easy to make, and it looks absolutely stunning, don't you think, lads? So, um, sorry, that was that was a really bad attempt at a British. I'm so sorry for my British viewers, honest to God. I really am. Anyway, um, 
So that's it. That's how easy it was. I hope you enjoyed the video. Next, we we're going to get into something a little bit more complicated, but so much fun. You know, I found out how to do it. I actually saw that slide one time and I'm like, I have to do that slide. And I actually did it. And uh, we're going to get into that. So the tutorial is now done. We can focus on our five lucky winners. Uh, recall last week I announced a giveaway and these five lucky people would receive a license for one year with SlideProof, the powerful, powerful, awesome PowerPoint add-in that I actually really enjoyed. So congratulations to you guys. Um, the total value of this giveaway is just under $1,000. So you guys are very, very, very lucky people. Uh, I just wanted to go over one thing, actually two things. The first thing is I made sure that all of these comments uh, were picked randomly. Uh, I did go on multiple sites just to make sure of that. I clicked on the button again and again and again and I just wanted to get that out of the way just to make sure that this is a very transparent process. I also don't know any of these guys. I'd love to know these guys but I don't know any of them and uh, yeah everything was fair and due diligence was processed uh, when I was doing this. The second thing is I can't pronounce these all of these names correctly and uh, forgive me if I mispronounce your name. I really hate mispronouncing names. I really do. So uh, I'm, you're not, you guys are not here to correct me, but feel free to talk to me and correct me uh, in the future. I'm, I'm very, very open. Everyone knows that. So uh, congratulations to our first winner, which is Liquid Aloha 666. Uh, he said his day is going great, even though he has to move cities by Thursday, but he's moving somewhere where there should be a lot more cows than there are uh, where he currently is, so that's cool. Well, congratulations. I hope you have a safe move and let me know if one of these cows are expert at PowerPoint. Maybe we can do a collaboration sometime. Our second winner is Jake R. He said that his day is okay, but he had a good sandwich for lunch. Jake, let me tell you, sandwiches are fantastic. I love sandwiches so much. You have no idea how much I love sandwiches. My fiance is sick of me because I love sandwiches. I always tell her that I want to go to one place for lunch because they have awesome sandwiches. I, I love sandwiches. So our third winner is Philip Urban. He said that flying is a pain sometimes. Also, giveaway. Phil, I have to say, I love how you're very to the point. It's great. I love how you just went, flying is a pain sometimes. There's my comment. Also, comma, giveaway. You didn't say, also, I'd love to win this giveaway or whatever. You just went, also, <laughs> I just love it. Well, congratulations. Giveaway. There you go. So, uh... Our fourth winner is Sean Park or Seen Park. I can't pronounce that. I thought usually if there's an S, I don't know. Anyway, Sean uh, says that my day was long, but I got a lot of work done. Well, you're about to get a lot more work done in your day with the slide proof add in. I promise you that. Uh, Lynx Kitten says that if she or he will win, she will or he will post the moo. You have to post the moo now, <laughs> you know, you, you, these, you're, you're now bound, right? The, there's, the, scent, the proof is in the put. it's right there, it's right in front of you. You have to do it now, you have to do it. So congratulations to all of you guys. What I need you to do now is I need you to message me and if I don't get an answer by next Tuesday, I'm gonna have to pick someone else, right? Uh, don't make me do that because you guys won this fair and square. Okay, so what I need you guys to do is get onto the SlideCow YouTube page as you see here, click on about and then click on send message. So you can say whatever you want here, but the main thing that you need to put, and please listen now, is the email that you want me to contact you with. All right, I'm going to send you an email from my email and go over the steps with you and hopefully we can carry out our conversation over there but I need your emails on that contact list. And the reason why I'm asking you to do it over here rather than any other norm so I can verify that it's actually you contacting me, all right? If there are any issues along the way, please don't worry. I'm, 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 I'll, 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 I'll work something out with you. Just don't worry about that so much, okay? So congratulations to you guys again. Next week's video is gonna be fun. It's gonna be another infographic video that I think would uh, help out a lot of those uh, PowerPoint enthusiasts and uh, yeah, if you do like the video then please do like, do comment, do share and do subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya!